Hi everyone. It is uh, April 19, 2019. I am going to read some of this incredible, thorough, detailed report, Microwave Harassment and Mind Control Experimentation, Julian McKinney, Electronic Surveillance Project, Association of National Security Alumni. This is a group of former uh, intelligence officers, former military, who back in 1992 were trying to expose the targeting of innocent Americans with weapons, uh, electronic weapons, gang stalking, these projects, programs that involve a lot of different agencies, the CIA, the NSA, FBI, local law enforcement, tech agencies that literally go out and either randomly or specifically for a reason target people and destroy their life. Wow. Now, what a job, huh? What a job to get involved in something like this, to destroy somebody else's life. How do people do this? I've tried to imagine myself agreeing. Yeah, uh, uh, this is my employment. Okay. Well, look, something is very wrong in our country. And what makes it wrong? Is it just the crazy elitist psychopaths? No. We've got a lot of very sick ordinary Americans who will do anything for a paycheck. And yes, we have a lot of very sick and twisted ordinary Americans who think, wow, this would be fun to destroy somebody's life. Okay. Um, I want to uh, show you that th there's a video, Julian McKinney. And I believe that this is her first interview with a journalist. I will link below to this Vimo video. And if you don't want to listen to me, read some of that report, go and click on the link and listen to Julian McKinney, who is former military, army, intelligence. And she was back in 1992 trying to expose the targeting of innocent Americans. I want to remind you of the Global Targeted Individual Spring Rally, which is April 26 and 27, Sacramento, California. It will also be in other areas around the country as well as the world. They're trying to educate the public about this organized stalking, electronic harassment. And there is a proposed bill. One of the objectives of this, real, of this rally is in the hopes of um, gaining the attention of lawmakers in California to get this bill passed, the Organized Torture Act that seeks to explicitly outlaw organized stalking crimes and the electromagnetic weapons that are used as part of this overwhelming assault on victims of these crimes. So I will link below to this article of Thomas McFarland and I will also link below to the website that gives details about this rally. So. I want to read the specifics. This is a report based on testimony of those targeted and their experiences. But first, I do want to just read a few things to let you see that we do have a takeover. We've had a takeover of this country for a very, very long time. Decades and decades of, of psychological warfare, to control the perception of Americans, to change it. 
to get it away from uh, their, you know, uh, American traditions and values, but freedom, that idea, to destroy it. And they've been very successful, and that's what is so upsetting. But this targeting that is taking place, the organized um, stalking that is coming out of government agencies, our military, tech agencies, local law enforcement, is very similar to what the KGB was doing. February 1974, Georgetown University Center for Strategic and International Studies hosted discussions on the plight of dissenters in the Soviet Union. KGB strategies were addressed. The KGB's success depended on the extensive use of informant networks and agents provocateurs. And following Brezhnev's rise to power on the use of drugs and psychiatrists for further purposes of manipulation and control. And when you look at how many people are on psychiatric medications in this country, <laughs> well, um, either we were a severely mentally ill country, you know, mental illness just proliferated rapidly and suddenly everybody is being diagnosed and put on medications. It is for social control. That was the point. Shadowing, bugging, slandering, blacklisting, and other related tactics were also cited as serving KGB purposes. Agencies of our own government are on record as having employed precisely these same tactics on a recurrent basis. There uh, was committee hearings, the Church and Rockefeller hearings during the 70s, um, which, yeah, the end result was to end MK Ultra, MH Chaos, and COINTELPRO. Nothing ends. The weather modification did not end with the hearings in the 70s, the weather modification that our military was um, employing in Vietnam, it did not end. They just um, drive it underground and fund it. They fund it through different agencies. There's a lot of tactics that they use to never end a program. They just hide it better. So here, um, 20, this Julian McKinney, this organization, they had contact with 25 individuals scattered through the United States. Those individuals firmly believed they were being harassed by agencies. Others have been brought to our attention, whom we will be contacting in the future. The majority of these individuals claim that their harassment and surveillance began in 1989. The methods reportedly employed in these harassment campaigns bear a striking resemblance to those attributed to the CIA and FBI during operations MK Ultra, MH Chaos, COINTELPRO. The only difference is the technology, the electronic harassment, and experimentation. Berlin Wall is down. Remember, this is 1992. Berlin Wall came down. Communism in the midst of a death rattle. KGB no longer poses the threat, which purportedly served to justify the U.S. government's resort to such operations as MK Ultra, MH Chaos. Uh, COINTELPRO. The KGB since 1989 has been reduced to an increasingly distant memory. Were we really concerned about the Soviet Union? Were we really in a Cold War? Or was that just the propaganda that was set upon the 
well, now older generations. It was. The Soviet Union and the United States were very much involved uh, together in research and experimentation with these new weapons. So the reactivation of surveillance, harassment, mind control operations in this country suggests that the KGB as an institution was never the real threat. The KGB mentality with its underlying pragmatic contempt for civil liberties appears instead to have been the driving force behind MKUltra, MH Chaos, COINTELPRO, and the operations now reported to this organization by innocent victims of these programs. So the KGB mentality is a matter of personal predilection, not ideology. Its objective is power and control, regardless of human cost. It is a corrupting, cancerous influence, feeds on fear, conformity, government funding. Um, the, well, as a mentality, this mentality in Americans, the KGB appears to be accomplishing more in burying this country from within. This was in 1992. It is 2019. And look at where we are. A mess. A dark mess. Um, so yeah, the KGB, it, it could, could, it could never have hoped to have achieved as an institution what it has achieved here in the United States in a relatively short period of time. So part one of the report addresses the complaints and that's what I'm going to be focusing on. And part two discusses the overt and covert patterns of harassment identified as a result of our investigation, the investigation of this um, this group of former intelligence and military officers. And interesting is, it does seem that those victims of the UFO experiences have more credibility than those who talk about the targeting that is taking place. Um, I might have gotten that wrong. I might be focusing on part two, but um, here, MK Ultra. Shocking details of medical ethics abuses by the U.S. and Canadian governments were detailed. Washington and Ottawa, citing national security and government privilege, stalled for so long that the cases never came to trial. Surviving victims, victims settled for a pittance, pittance this was all true, factual, settled cases. So how, why is it so difficult for Americans and no doubt Canadians to believe that these programs still exist and that people are being tortured? Now, typically persons who complain of being zapped by radio waves and of hearing voices are stigmatized as psychotic, delusional, schizophrenic. And what happens to them? Those who try to um, get the help of law enforcement, very often they are told to seek psychiatric help when what is happening to them is very real. They're simply not believed. Now here, interesting, they were trying to determine what if any technology existed for this electronic harassment in 1992. They came across a white paper published in 1991, U.S. Global Strategy Council, a Washington-based based organization 
under the chairmanship of Ray Klein, a former deputy director of the CIA. The paper describes the foreign and domestic uses foreseen for laser weapons, isotropic radiators, infrasound, those extremely long frequencies that you can see, wow, pulsing away on radar sites, and non-nuclear electromagnetic pulse generators and high power microwave emitters. And you do know that if we do have an EMP attack, they can say that a nuclear bomb was sent from North Korea over to the United Nations. They can simulate a nuclear bomb that is with no radiation and take out our power grid. And yes, considering that our life, our reality has just been one big betrayal, a betrayal after another betrayal after another betrayal. No, I do not trust our government or military. And yes, I will point to our government or military in causing that EMP. Now, will I be able to state that definitively? No, because other countries have this technology. But our government, our military, has grown so evil that um, you cannot think that anything would stop them from taking any kind of action to advance their objectives. Non-lethal weapons which is very misleading because all they have to do is amplify the power and they can kill people. Amplify the power of these frequencies at low levels of amplification they can cause extreme forms of physical discomfort and debilitation. Here, Department of Army identifies these same weapons as non-conventional. They were so identified in an exhibit at a Department of Army sponsored symposium, the soldier as a system. Beta wave incapacitators were separately mentioned during the symposium. As a particular interest of the U.S. Marine Corps, beta wave incapacitators Beta, you know, the beta state of your mind, that is when your mind is, um, as an example, performing um, a mathematical problem. Your ability to analyze, critically think, that's the beta state. Analytical. So they have, I absolutely do believe, incapacitating Americans' ability to think. Incapacitating the beta state, uh, state of their mind. When you see how powerful radar, these extremely low frequencies, are being used throughout the country, and you see the condition of the American people, something has gone terribly wrong. Now, a lot of people may leave a comment. Well, then why are you blaming Americans? I blame us, and I've blamed me, okay? So don't think that I have excluded myself at all. I have not. We were in a bad spiritual psychological condition before this technology rolled out. And it was our job to grow, to mature, to do that self-reflective work. When back in the 80s, very few were, even though they were, oh, I'm so spiritual, I'm on the spiritual road, and let me go to the next new age 
um, guru that is, you know, planning on giving a talk in New York City. Or let me go to that spiritual retreat that is so incredibly expensive. Or yes, the Christian hypocrites. Um, we really have been a very, very immature people. And it was our job to mature. And I'm sorry, um, there has been great failure on our part. So, here, Walter Reed Army Medical Center, experimenting with auditory effects of pulse microwave audiograms and evidence that they were using psychiatric in patients to do their experiments. So the preliminary findings of this report, the technology exists for the type of harassment and experimentation. About a dozen U.S. citizens have informed us of continuing experiences with effects which directed energy weapons are designed to produce. U.S. government sponsored research into the bio effects of exposure to microwave radiation is extensive and continuing. U.S. government has a past record of having engaged in mind control experimentation and various agencies of the government have a record of circumventing legal restrictions upon their activities. Neither Congress nor the courts appear willing to look closely into black intelligence and weapons procurement programs. A number of U.S. government agencies might have interest in testing directed energy technologies on U.S. citizens under non-clinical, non-controlled circumstances. Department of Defense to test ranges and degrees of non-lethality. Uh, lethality, sorry. Department of Energy to explore safety limits. CIA to test mind control capabilities. NSA surveillance technical refinement. So, overt and covert harassment. Now, <laughs> I guess I'll read up until like 35 minutes. Then I will link below and you can read further. This report is very thorough and very detailed, but it gives you a very clear idea of what these targeted individuals are living so when I see comments that are, that's one of my Mustangs. Um, when I see comments that say, well, we're all targeted now, or I see comments that say, trying to answer somebody's question about, well, how do you know if you're targeted and people are writing, well, uh, you know, it starts with the hissing that you hear in your ears, the tinnitus. I, I um, there's a lot of information that people pass around that is not accurate. Tinnitus is exponentially increasing through just the simple existence of this Wi-Fi world. It doesn't mean that everybody is going to become a targeted individual. Targeted individuals, by the way, live something beyond what all of us are living. So I don't like to uh, equate um, <clears throat> what we are all living due to having been subjected to and can't get out of this Wi-Fi world, smart meters, the cell towers, the cell phones, the Gwen towers, the radar, the extremely low frequencies. Yes, we are all targeted in that sense. It's uh, the targeting of regions, populations within those regions. This is different. This is, this is in addition to this 
targeting that I am talking about. And, it, you know, it, it, it really is very important to recognize the differences in experience because when you don't and you flatline everybody's experience, you merge it into just one big experience that we're all having, you are merging your experience with somebody else's and their experience may be very different but what you do is annihilate them you don't really listen to the differences you're only listen to, listening to what you can relate to and it's part of the you know disease of narcissism which we have in this country and no you don't need to be pathologically narcissist to have the tendencies. So we have to work on how we think, how we listen. Um, do we listen with filters in our own brain, which then filter the experiences that we're, we're being told, you know, or somebody is communicating to us, we filter those experiences with our own. So you're not really listening to the individual who is trying to communicate their experience. And very often what happens is the person who's trying to communicate their experience walks away not feeling any kind of solace, actually feeling worse because they know that they have not been listened to and yes, people do have experiences that are so extraordinary, and I don't mean that in the sense of good, just so different from the ordinary. And they're worse. They're worse. Yes, we also have a tendency to flatline everybody's experiences and, oh, well, what do you think you're unique? And what do you think you're, you know, having a worse time? There are people who really do experience life in a way that the ordinary cannot even imagine. And it's torture and it's hell and it's brutal. And the use of those descriptive words is not they being dramatic. It's accurate. Overt harassment, which obviously is meant to be observed, may be intended to precondition individuals for eventual long-term electronic harassment. Many of the overt harassment tactics discussed below are surfacing in cases which so far have not involved discernible forms of electronic harassment. Well, in 1992, uh, they certainly weren't using the electronic harassment like they are today. Um, these are cases involving so-called whistleblowers, who, because of their inside knowledge of certain potenti potentially newsworthy events, pose particular threats of embarrassment to the government or to government affiliated employers. We have noticed that electronic harassment is beginning to surface as a form of retaliation against persons who try to assist electronic harassies. Retaliation suggests loss of control. Individuals now in touch with the project describe their circumstances as involving most, if not all, of the following overt forms of harassment, sudden, bizarrely rude treatment, isolation and acts of harassment and vandalism by formerly friendly neighbors, harassing telephone calls, which continue even after the targeted individual obtains new unlisted telephone numbers, mail interception, threat, uh, theft, tampering, noise campaigns, unrelenting harassing telephone calls might be considered in this context, blaring horns, whistles, sirens, garbage disposal um, run concurrently in apartment settings for excessively prolonged periods of time, amplified transmissions of recorded general racket 
have been used on a recurrent basis under circumstances. Um, individuals, neighbors, apparently pretended to be oblivious and or indifferent to this sudden continuous explosion of noise. Door slamming is a big one, particularly in apartment buildings. One individual reported during a peak period of harassment, the neighbor across the hall began entering and leaving his apartment every 10 minutes, slamming his door loudly on each occasion. Uh, it was a daily occurrence. It went on for several hours. It went on for several months. When uh, the victim contacted the neighbor, it just went over and said, could you please close your door more quietly? He slammed the door in her face, and yet, prior to this harassment, he had been very friendly and courteous. Um, you have people who are engaged in employment, who are doing the harassment like uh, an employee of Raddock System, Rockville, Maryland, a Department of Defense contractor engaged in the super secret research and development of some time some type of electronic equipment uh, he was one of the door slammers uh, several individuals reported recurrent loud strange noises in their ventilation system uh, during their their preliminary stages of harassment one individual complained of being recurrently awakened in the middle of the night by the sound of wires being fed into the ventilation system. On checking further, he found that a tubular construction had been built into his vent system, which appears to lead to the apartment upstairs. And his upstairs neighbor was employed at the Department of Justice. A um, number of individuals report that occupants of upstairs and downstairs apartments appear to follow them from room to room tapping on the floor, or engaging in other activities, which appear intended to advertise an ongoing surveillance. Justice Department employee mentioned above went so far as to offer an unsolicited apology to her downstairs neighbor for the all-night pacing about. Uh, she claimed that she was experiencing insomnia, that pacing about continued during her recent 36-hour absence from the area. When our contact politely alerted her to the fact that her apartment had apparently been entered during her absence, she told him, in effect, to mind his own business, and then immediately complained to the building manager that he was stalking her. This is what they do. They contact building managers. They contact employers, they get people fired, they get people blacklisted, they financially ruin them, they um, contact uh, family and friends, and suddenly they grow more and more isolated. Um, and the contact is just gaslighting, manipulation, um, lying. So. He was stalking her. She conveniently forgot to inform the building manager that she had assiduously courted this individual for several months without success. Then she began stealing his newspaper on a regular basis. And her reason for collecting and saving newspapers, which she would then bring to him, oh, all of these newspapers, here, they're yours, they were... Um, delivered outside the wrong door. Uh, the reason why she was collecting and saving newspapers, why didn't she just bring it over the first newspaper she saw misdelivered? No, it was a stack of them. Well, that's unknown. You know, you, you, you literally go into this, like, who are you dealing with? You can't get any answers. Nobody will explain their bizarre behavior. You fall into, you know, if you've ever seen Kafka's The Trial, well, the book is far better than the movie, but you suddenly become Mr. K. You don't understand what the hell has happened to your life. Nobody will give you an explanation. 
and you begin to feel as if you're the accused, but nobody will tell you what you have been accused of. Yeah, your life becomes very dark and surreal. And this is very real. Uh, cur recurrent confrontations by unusually hostile strangers and comments by strangers, which appear intended to evoke paranoid reactions. No, people are not paranoid. They know it's happening, but the response that they get from people who don't believe them, oh, you're just paranoid. Oh, you're mentally ill. Go see a psychiatrist. Several individuals have uh, reported confrontations with homeless people. Um, entries into the individual's residence during late night hours while sleeping or during the day when the individual was out. Burglars, uh, they would steal things uh, or relocate objects or commit petty and not not so petty acts of vandalism. In two cases, the calling card was slaughtered pets. Uh, uh, I'm going to go to 40 minutes. In one case, um, correspondence was stolen. They left a packet of crack cocaine behind and the individual had no criminal record, no history of drugs, using drugs, and was being stalked by a police officer in her community. One of the police officer's recent acts was to frame her with a drug possession charge. After pulling her off the road, subjecting her to an illegal search, he conveniently managed to find a gas gasine packet of uh, or glassine packet of cocaine eight feet away. This is what people are going through. Um, in other cases, an individual reported that a tremendous amount of money had been stolen. Odd, it she had just gone to the bank and came home and hid it and then it was gone. There was no obvious sign of entry into the apartment and the police conducted a cursory inquiry, failing to produce evidence. Well, the money, money is usually not stolen. Documents appear to be the preferred objects of theft. In another case, replaced installed light bulbs with exploding bulbs, many of which were made in Hungary. And the light bulbs were turned over to Julia McKinney and her group. Uh, rapidly deteriorating health, generally of a digestive nature. In two cases, massive rectal bleeding accompanied the sudden onset of severe gastrointestinal disturbances. One of these individuals abruptly terminated the uh, deterioration process simply by changing the locks on her door. Uh, sleep disturbance, deprivation achieved by means of both overt and electronic harassment. Sleep deprivation as a tactic invariably surfaces when the targeted individual begins exhibiting a strong emotional and irrational response to the other forms of harassment. Uh, their private cars are vandalized, slashed tires, smashed windows, oil drainage, oil contamination, destruction of electronic components and batteries, frequently involving wild, fluctuating, grounded fuel gauges, often within range of weapons research facilities and microwave emitters, suddenly failed brakes or clutches. Um, Two individuals reported finding their oil contaminated immediately after having an oil change uh, by reputable mechanics. In one of the cases, the oil bisosified, bisosified, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, thickened. While the individual was driving through a remote rural area, her car grounded to a halt, uh, gaining the gunk cleaned, getting the gunk cleaned out of her 
engine proved to be an expensive ordeal. These people are put through expensive ordeals very often, which contributes to their financial ruin. Um, and this uh, thickening of oil the agents used was lauded by the U.S. Global Strategy Council as serving as a non-lethal strategic means or weapon. Uh, most of those who have experienced these attacks on a recurring basis have abandoned driving altogether. Many have been uh, driven off the road, car accidents, um, many just give up driving because they're put through repeated um, acts of terror. And the totaling of cars, the car accidents, all of the problems with the cars, well then they're suddenly carless because they can't afford to get another car. Accidental deaths do occur. Uh, one individual in contact with this group reported that her mother drove off a cliff to her death. That was after visiting a dentist, I believe. Um, there was a death of a woman in Lexington, Missouri, who was killed when the brakes on her tractor failed. She, or this group, was informed that she had been collecting affidavits from persons who believed they are the targets of government harassment and experimentation when her accident occurred and the affidavits went missing. Suicides um, might be qualified as staged accidents. I look with this kind of destruction of one's life, all aspects of their life destroyed. Of course, people would want out. I don't think it's an accident. I think that some people are driven to kill themselves. But there's always that plausible deniability with our government. Um, isolation of the individual from members of his or her immediate family uh, virtually assured when highly focused forms of electronic harassment commenced. There is so much involved in just this one program of the gang stalking and then the use of electronic harassment. There are many programs. Having listened to an awful lot who have done the research on these on this targeting. Some people are only targeted with electronic harassment. Some people are targeted in a way they don't have the gang stalking, but using frequencies to literally invade the brains, the minds of their friends and have those friends turn on them. And it's so subtle with these frequencies, and that's going to be my next video in how they've perfected this technology. And they can literally shift one's opinion, perception, reality in one's mind, and suddenly you're facing great betrayal of a friend and there's no way to work it out because they're cemented in a reality that did not happen. How do you prove any of this? It's almost impossible. So you have the destruction of lives going on. The success of these programs has been magnificent and it's only going to continue to be a success with more and more people progressive financial impoverishment brought on by termination of the individual's employment compounded by expenses associated with the harassment um, children are targeted reduced to extremes of pain having to uh, repeatedly go to the hospital for treatments 
right? illness. They can target with these frequencies, induce a whole lot of medical issues that suddenly you're facing tremendous financial hardship. And all of it is brought about deliberately, intentionally. And when you figure that out and you try to you know, solicit some kind of solace from your friends and you can't get it because they just now think you're crazy and walk away from you, this is a life of hell. Termination of employment in many cases involve uh, harassment by employers and co-workers which coincide with other overt forms of harassment. Um, yeah. All right, I will link below. You can continue to read. It really is inc incredible. And the CIA, well, look at what happened with Kennedy's assassination. They took over the Warren Commission. And they gave us that bullshit, obvious, like, uh, are you kidding me? Answer, the magic bullet that killed Kennedy. And we all just accepted it. The CIA, ever since, has been pretty much in control. Congress, we don't have a government that people think we have. There's no oversight of these programs. Even when they hold hearings, the hearings are just that staged show to continue the delusion in Americans' minds that they actually have a government, that they have people in Congress that are actually working and doing something, but nothing ever changes. Nothing ever changes. Local police are involved. FBI is involved. And there's a lot of other projects that you might want to check out, like Project Slammer which includes the NSA, DIA, Army, Navy, Air Force. There's a whole lot just in this one report if you're someone who does research. Yeah, 47. I was going to stop at 35. Well, it's important information. We need to, we need to stop thinking that everybody lives our experience and if they voice an experience that is different from ours, that we stop the judgment and just listen to somebody because not everybody is living the same experience. And some people have lived a life that is pretty wild. But what happens is those in the bell curve, which I have spoken of before, the bell curve, the majority of the population who live, uh, you know, dysfunctionally, they're the well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society, and they just think that they're fine and great, and um, they have no problem, and they don't have to work on anything, um, but they are really seriously mentally ill. And they cause an awful lot of problems. They contribute greatly to this nightmare that we are living. And they all think that everybody lives the same experience. Well, there are people at the extremes. Unfortunately, a few down at you know the extreme, it's a continuum of dysfunction. So you have a few that are those who come from the healthy, caring, loving families and then on the other side outside the bell curve you have people who have lived an experience that you guys in that bell curve don't want to hear and there's a forcing of uh, uh you get into the bell curve or we don't want to hear from you there's a shutting up that goes on the social engineering doesn't just come from those who are deliberately social engineering the population. The social engineering comes from us as well. How we relate to one another. We shut people up who have different experiences. We force them into our experience. Live my experience. Don't talk about anything beyond that. Um, there's so many 
ways in which we, oh, you're a victim, oh, you're this, oh, you're... We have to stop that. We have to stop that and just simply listen. Simply listen. All links are below.